Hey there, I'm John Siskovich from Farm Marketing Solutions and today we're going to talk about what convenient chicken looks like. So what I did is got together with a bunch of my friends and we bought four, bought or brought four different chickens. This one I raised, this is a Purdue Oven Stuffer Roaster. This is from my friend Heather Holland of Outland Farm Brewery uh, and this is a big Y chicken. It's like the store-bought chicken that you would get at the store where they buy them in bulk and then they package them in their own branding. Uh, so we're going to talk about specifically these two chickens today, my chicken and their Purdue, because I want to go over what my packaging is and some of the details there and what the Purdue oven stuffer roaster packaging looks like where uh, it just is completely different. And we're going to talk about how they have made chicken more convenient for the consumer, who, which makes it more palatable in the store. That's not necessarily a good thing for me, and that's not necessarily a good thing for you but we're going to do a customer review we're going to get into the shoes of the customer and talk about what you see when you buy these chickens Hey there, it's John talking to you candidly. Uh, next week, we're going to go over cheese and milk and how I just drowned in it and what that means for you as a consumer and you as a producer. We're going to break down that just overwhelm and anxiety that you have in the, the, uh, the, not the farmer's market, but the store when you see all these different brands and varieties and choices and options and it just drives you crazy. Uh, but stay tuned, hit that notification bell on your YouTube uh, to see the new video for next week. But until then, let's get just back to the episode. <coughs> we're going to do what me and my friend Heather did and we're going to take a look at the chickens that I purchased and see what their packaging is, uh, what my packaging is, and how uh, Purdue sells a great convenient chicken. And that's there's great takeaways both if you're a customer and if you are a farmer and you are trying to sell chickens. Um, but we're going to do a customer review today and uh, look at these products and just kind of give our take on it. So here's, here's mine. Here's uh, one of my frozen footballs, as I joke, uh, where you get a whole chicken, giblets on the inside, that's the neck, the heart, and the liver. Uh, and it, I generally sell it frozen because doing the fresh logistics at my scale, it just, I can't deliver fresh consistently enough to supply the people who want it fresh all the time. So I moved over to a just all frozen model. Um, so you're getting a frozen bird that's about four and a half pounds. Let's zoom in on my label here where I have my farm logo, name, my address, and my phone number. I have the average four and a half pounds because really the people who are buying from me know a lot of my story, have heard it from my own mouth, have come to the farm and seen it, have developed a relationship with me and my farm. And that is how I get around any fancy labeling and bags and uh, presentation. What I'm selling is a more simple, honest product where I it's as naked as possible because I don't want to hide exactly what it is. The reason why chicken, t ev the people joke that everything tastes like chicken is because modern chicken doesn't taste like anything because it's raised in a barn, doesn't see sunlight, doesn't have grass and bugs to eat, and lays on a pile of its own manure while it's just eating and gradually getting unable to walk around on its own, uh, out of its own volition, unless it's just to get some feed and then sit in its own poop again. That is not what this chicken is. I want simple packaging so that you can see exactly what it is and we can have a conversation about it. I have information on my website. I have information on my farm. I have transparent practices. I give farm tours every weekend and that is how I do my marketing. Uh, so I can have a more simplistic uh, product because I'm not in a store in shelf space. I'm actually conversing with people and talking to them face to face. Um, and selling that way. Uh, and I do farm tours where people can see my production for themselves. There's no closed doors, it's all transparent. Um, so I can have a real simple product and that's what I'm selling. Now, when we go over to Mr. Convenience, Mr. Purdue, this is brilliant marketing. Uh, as a customer going to a grocery store, when I'm trying to make snap decisions and I've got a laundry list of things that I need to purchase, this is very enticing. Let's start from the top of this package and work down to the bottom in as quick a fashion as I can do on a YouTube video. So starting right here at the top, this is some brilliant stuff right here, I'm trying to keep it family friendly. 
um, you have this. If, if, you're, if you're not used to buying a whole chicken, but you have to feed a bunch of people, uh, dealing with a whole carcass, whether it's frozen and that's cold on your hands, or if it's cool and sweating and you don't like the texture of meat because that's what people in our culture generally feel right now, the broad acceptance is that a uh, whole chicken, a whole bird meat with bones in it is weird because we've had the convenience of boneless, skinless chicken breast for so long. So if you want to get away from that as a customer, having a little handle on the top, brilliant move. Now, let's go down a little further. Uh, on the packaging, it's got this brown, nice uh, warm frame. So you're framing it in and you're, you're setting aside where you want people to view the information right in the middle uh, where it's white and it has the highest contrast. And it says oven ready. Well, let, we start, we're starting at the top, but I'm already drawn into that oven ready. This is convenient. This is easy. Let's go. But right here on the top, it says no prep, easy cleanup tender and juicy, deliciously seasoned. Ooh, as a customer who has uh, a daughter who goes to ballet and I have an infant and um, this is, you know, I'm trying to balance all that. My wife works full time, I work full time, plus I have this whole YouTube thing. I want a convenient chicken. So we're looking at no prep, easy cleanup. I don't have to do the prep work. Oh, it's all done for me. Easy cleanup because you got to clean up dinner, then the baby's got to take a bath. And then my oldest daughter, she's doing her thing before she does the bedtime routine. They go to the bedtime routine, and while that one's doing the bedtime routine, the other parent is cleaning up the kitchen. You're cleaning up the kitchen. If you can make that my day easier so I'm not cleaning my kitchen at 9.30 at night, that's what I'm looking for. Um, tender and juicy, deliciously seasoned. Oh, man, that sounds wonderful. That I'm hungry. I'm in the store. I want to buy this. This is all language that you can use when you're trying to sell chicken. So we have uh, the branding, their label, who is it? It's Purdue's, that is just right front and center. Um, no antibiotics ever. That's a claim because chickens like this are raised in barns where uh, they're all living on the floor. They have three quarters of a square foot. That's an A4 piece of paper uh, to live in. Now with that A4 piece of paper, they stand up, they eat, they poop, they sit down and they don't that, that's it. That's life. They never move uh, generally from that spot. They might shift a little bit around the, the floor, but there's enough birds wall to wall to wall to wall where all the birds take up all the space and they've maximized it. And that's a very productive farm. They produce a lot of meat, feed a lot of people. Chickens are the most consumed protein on the planet right now. About 22 million a day or something like that. It's crazy. So <clears throat> um, no antibiotics ever because it became a big thing. They were feeding antibiotics uh, to chickens or to livestock because they had to combat these terrible inhumane conditions. Now they've gotten away from that and then they're advertising that negative press. They're saying like, you've seen the danger. This is danger free zone. So they went with, uh, zooming back out, we went with uh, convenience and then they went with a health claim, like a health and wellness and like scare claim. Uh, and then we're going to go back into convenience for the next section. Oven ready, whole seasoned, roaster without the neck and giblets. If you're not used to cooking a whole bird and you're not wanting to use the whole animal, you just want the bits of chicken that are good for you, um, you're going to buy something without the giblets inside because then you don't have to figure out what to do with the neck, the heart, and the liver. For me, I saute the heart and liver in butter mince it up and put it in rice and make chicken and rice. Uh, and that little extra protein just works its way into the rice and you never really realize it's there. And it's a good way to get iron uh, to your kids. <clears throat> so my neck, uh, I'll roast the neck with the chicken and then throw that in the pot with the stock at the end. So I take the bones uh, and whatever meat hasn't been eaten, put it in with water in my slow cooker and then put the neck in it. Uh, and that's what I do with that. But you can not do that and that's your life too. So uh, this one is interesting, containing up to 17% of a solution of water and seasonings and coated with a topical seasoning. So it, uh, if you're raising a bird in a barn with no space to move, then it's not going to have very developed muscle fibers. Uh, and they're going to break down a little bit easier. Think of being soft and flabby from spending too much time on the couch or in the winter. Um, <clears throat> that's kind of been me lately. Put on some weight, but you know, still feeling good. Now, um, if you have a bird that uh, has been out on pasture and moves every single day, it's getting away from its manure. It's leaving its manure behind and it's moving onto a fresh salad bar where it can eat grass and bugs, scratch in the ground and move and walk around. It has to at least move the length of its pen forward on a day-to-day -day basis instead of standing in the same spot. 
If you're standing in the same spot, you're loose and flabby. When you're cooked, a lot of your uh, moisture comes out. One passive way to convince uh, people that you're seasoning it, but you're actually adding a little bit of moisture into it too. I mean, you are seasoning it is that you can essentially put it in a bag in a bag and then brine it and have it sitting in water until the customer gets it. So it's maximized. Think about cooking a soaked sponge. Uh, you're maximizing the water that's in that bird. So when you cook it, it maintains some of that moisture for the end user, uh, even though, you know, then it involves all this extra steps in processing. Um, so we went with convenience on this step. Now let's go to the very bottom. There we go. Computer got stuck because I got it chatty. <clears throat> Our chickens are raised, so we're back to like health claims. Our chickens are raised with no antibiotics ever, no animal byproducts, all vegetarian diet, and raised cage-free, no hormones or steroids added. A lot of loaded statements there. Uh, no antibiotics. We see that reiterated uh, from the top when it was very much highlighted in yellow. Yellow is the color that people look to first. Um, no animal byproducts that came from uh, people feeding cows to cows, mash, or grinding up uh, cows and the parts that weren't used and then feeding them back to cows for a cheap energy source. And uh, that's where mad cow disease came from. And that was a big thing, I think, in the 90s. Uh, I was young at the time. Uh, so no animal byproducts is great because now we're not grinding up animals and feeding them to themselves and cannibalizing anymore. That's a good thing. I would say uh, all vegetarian diet, that's kind of baloney because birds should be out on grass eating grasshoppers and bugs and beetles and earthworms and crickets. Um, and I don't understand why they have to eat an all vegetarian diet. They, they cannot eat themselves or other animals, but they uh, are omnivores and they're meant to have a diverse diet. Uh, raised cage free is a holdover from the egg laying industry where uh, birds were raised in battery cages where there was too many birds to one cage. And then people started to realize that their cheap eggs were at the expense of the welfare of those animals. And it was just like horrible. Uh, so we've gotten away from it. That has nothing to do with broilers because broilers are raised on open floor barns and have that three quarters of a square foot per bird. Um, so the cage free is just not really applicable, but applicable at the same time. So, uh, the other one that gets me, and I'm not going to spend much time on this, fresh from family farm since 1920, and then it's trademarked. Uh, what part of that is specifically trademarked? Is it that it's from 1920? Can we as, can I, like if I grow chickens and sell them, can I not say fresh from family farms? Because I'm a family farm. Um, so that one I don't get, but you know, they're making the claim that these are coming from family farms. They're coming from family farms, but we won't get into that. I'm just going to gloss right over some of this because I can't make this video nine hours long. So now we're going to move over to the back. At the very top, they're reiterating uh, how great your life is going to be when you have this chicken. Uh, my Purdue, and they say my Purdue oven roaster, like you're owning it, like you're reading it to yourself. There's a voice in your head when you read stuff and you're hearing yourself say my Purdue oven roaster comes already seasoned with its own cooking bag. So all you have to do is turn on the oven. So they're making the claim that it's, it's very easy. They've made it convenient for you. They're selling convenience as a thing. Uh, and for people who don't have a lot of time to cook, this is wonderful. So uh, four part infographic where they're walking you through the cooking it. They have all the details written out. So if you want more than just cut open the bag, slit open the other bag inside the bag, uh, cook at 350 degrees and then serve it to people like you need to be told to eat it uh, at the end. <clears throat> uh, but there are some details in there, like letting the meat rest afterwards. Um, but they tell you how to cook it. Uh, and then we get down into some of my favorite stuff on this packaging. Um, a gravy recipe, because, you know, gravy and meat, this is great. Especially if you had dry meat, you would want to encourage people to put gravy on it, which would add some moisture because once you cook it, that moisture cooks out of that meat a lot more and you'll have to have dry breast meat when you try to grow them that big. Um, nutrition facts, which are pretty, pretty generic for chickens. Uh, it's pretty, pretty high in protein, uh, you know, bag of meat. This one is my favorite. Uh, it's the, uh, guarantee, you know, like the, you know, money back guarantee quality 
quality guaranteed or money back. Jim Purdue signed like Jim signed it himself. And there's a 1-800 number on here. There's ways to get in contact, not only uh, directly with customer relations, their words, uh, or find Purdue Chicken on purdue.com, Facebook, Twitter, and Pinterest. Uh, and maybe we look at those social channels on this uh, YouTube channel at some point, just to see what they're talking about. You know, we're, we're talking about chicken. Uh, this is wonderful to me. If this purchase fails to meet your expectations, I want to know about it. Think about if you're buying a chicken that is the most conveniently packaged chicken you've ever bought. Do you think you're going to go through the effort if that chicken isn't up to your standards? If those are your standards, that you're going to go through the effort of contacting them and saying, you know, this is like a... It doesn't matter whether or not you're going to be satisfied because by the end of the meal, you're just moving on to the next thing anyways. Uh, it matters that that guarantee is there just to make you feel warm and snuggly. Now, my guarantee to my customers is like verbal. We're like, if you're not happy, let me know. How did you cook it? What went wrong? Did you leave it out too long? Like, well, you, we can figure out the details, and that's where my customer relations comes in. Uh, that's not tenable at this scale. You need to have 1-800 um, numbers and phone trees uh, and a corporate system and a policy to deal with customer feedback and how you utilize and uh, put weight onto those, the, you know, that different feedback that you're getting. But the fact that that guarantee is there makes people feel good uh, that if, you know, they're scared of something like cooking a whole chicken, especially if it's not something they do all the time, everything is going to be okay. So now we're going to put the chickens in the oven. Uh, we're going to look at what they uh, look like after we cook them. Then we're going to wrap this video up. So my chicken is on the left. Purdue is on the right. Um, my bird not in a plastic bag. This bird in a plastic bag. I will note that this bag when I put it in at this stage pre-cooking was soft and pliable like you would think of a, um, a Ziploc bag like uh, and I'm not saying it's the same plastic that's not a claim but it was soft and pliable and then when I cooked it um, instead of looking like that beautiful uh, evenly seasoned and browned chicken on the front of their packaging it looked like this it looked like uh, this uh, <laughs> where uh, the bag when I took it out and then started to manipulate it, it had gotten like crunchier and the chemical composition had definitely changed in that plastic. And again, cooking food in plastic just seems weird to me that you would heat it in plastic. Because even if it's like BPA free, you're still like cooking your food in plastic. Uh, it's just not, I don't know. We, uh, when I took the bird out of that crunchy plastic and went from that soft uh, Ziploc bag plastic to a, a crunchy, just weird textured bag because uh, it was full of, cr you know, crusty fat and cookedness in it. Um, when I took the bag off, it ripped off a bunch of the skin that had adhered itself to the plastic. And I, this is what I was uh, kind of left with was the big white ball that is the expectation uh, for this bird that hasn't been allowed to move. Um, the skin's really thin and kind of uh, filmy. Uh, I did get some brown uh, roasty parts. The fact that it was able to brown and roast inside plastic is just disturbing, but I, I'm sorry I'm harping on that. <coughs> and then we look at the chicken that was raised out on pasture and cooked outside of a plastic bag where I have a thicker skin, so when you cook it, it caramelizes, the fat like kind of caramelizes, it gets crunchy, and you get that little snap. Uh, all I did was a little bit of salt and pepper on this and the, let the chicken kind of speak for itself. And you see I've got a little more tone and muscle definition uh, in mine, and it's just like there's a balance of fatty goodness, and I have all my skin uh, left on my bird. And when we cut into it, it did win the blind taste testing among, it was among friends. Um, but we did do it blind and honestly, and when it came to it, this breast meat beat out. This breast meat um, that even though the, the seasoning came through in this, it was drier and the texture was uh, kind of off, uh, where this tasted and felt like you were eating a nice, good piece of meat. Yeah, at the end of the day, uh, I was very happy with the results. Um, they did back up my assumptions. Um, but the fact that the marketing was so fantastic for their Purdue chicken, I wanted to feature that in my customer review because, you know, like 
it, it is a convenient package and if you were trying to sell chicken there's a lot of lessons that you can take away just by buying one of these things taking it home and thinking through what did a board a, a board of marketing uh strategists sit around you know like in Mad Men and an ad agency and say these are the p things that the demographics say are are they're struggling with time to cook convenience of cleanup uh, how easy it is to cook and eat one of these birds and what are all the things we can do to uh, outsource our marketing to the packaging so it'll sell the product better uh, just something to think about uh, as we wrap up the video the idea that you can be self-sustaining on just your farm and your piece of land is kind of BS like no one should try to be completely self-sustainable in yourself. You're self-sustainable through your community. It doesn't have to be a gigantic international community, although that helps at times and the perspective is always good. Your local community, if you're the protein producer, your friend's going to produce vegetables and your other friend's going to produce honey and your other friends are going to produce milk and you're helping build a local network while you're sharing and bartering both uh, equipment, resources, and then food at the end of the day. Um, so that you are self-sustainable within your community. And us here on Farm Marketing Solutions are a community as well. We help each other grow and learn. I'm uh, very particular about the products that I buy at stores. The things that I can't produce myself uh, or my friends can't produce, I do go grocery shopping. And Kate and I have spent a lot of time reading labels and uh, learning what our products are. So I'm going to go into stores, buy some stuff, and talk about why we buy the things we buy as customer reviews uh, that we can all learn from as producers as well. So this will help educate you, the consumer, and you, the producer. Now, if you have questions or specific marketing problems, what we're covering here this year is Farm Marketing Solutions. If you go to my website, farmmarketingsolutions.com, this is uh, the top of the website you'll see inspiring and educating the next generation of farmers is our mission statement. And if you scroll through some links that you can check out if you want to, uh, at the very bottom of the page, when you hit the bottom, can't go any further, you'll find a form that says, ask me anything. And on here, you can ask me your questions about send me your farm website that you think could use some improvements, but you're not sure what to do now. We can talk about it and I can pull it up on my screen here and have a discussion here on YouTube. If you have a social media feed for your farm, if you spend a lot of time on Instagram, but you're not sure why you're not getting a lot of likes, perhaps we can look at it together and I can give you some advice or say, I'm not sure, but you know, here are the things that I've noticed and we'll all learn something together kind of review all this stuff and learn and grow and all the things that sound lovey-dovey here on my YouTube video. Um, but yeah, go fill out your form, send me an email. This populates a uh, spreadsheet for me uh, and then I pick and choose the ones that I know I can talk about and uh, hopefully we learn and grow from each other. And uh, that's all I have to say. Thanks for taking the time to watch this video. It's time for me to wrap it up and until next time, I will see you out in the field. Hey there, it's John talking to you candidly. Uh, next week we're going to go over cheese and milk and how I just drowned in it and what that means for you as a consumer and you as a producer. We're going to break down that just overwhelm and anxiety that you have in the, the, uh, the, not the farmer's market, but the store when you see all these different brands and varieties and choices and options and it just drives you crazy. Uh, but stay tuned, hit that notification bell on your YouTube uh, to see the new video for next week. But until then, let's get just back to the episode.